Hello and welcome back to another breaking news update. My name is Jimmy Boyd and you were watching Boyd News. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. I've got some breaking news coming out from the NATO conference to share with you as well. We're going to be talking about Ukraine here once again and we've got information that the NATO members have announced that Ukraine is on an irreversible path to join the NATO alliance. So this is very big news. And uh, we've known this for a while that, uh, you know, Jen Stoltenberg, the gentleman on the right side of your screen there, that is uh, the Secretary General of NATO right now. And uh, he's he's come out many times in the past and said that Ukraine is part of NATO. They will join NATO at some point. And we know that according to this uh, this conference, this NATO summit that was being held, Ukraine will eventually join the alliance. It just can't happen right now. It's going to have to happen after the war. So uh, this is very big developments here because uh, we know, obviously, that they want Ukraine to join, right? But at the same time, uh, Russia does not want Ukraine to become a part of NATO. And I'm going to be showing you a just a quick report as well from uh, Dmitry Medvedev, once again, the uh, chairman, head chairman of the National Security Council for uh, the Kremlin. And, uh, he, you know, he's coming out and he's not happy with this as well. Okay, and I'll show you his response to that here in just a little bit. Uh, but yeah, we know that Ukraine is eventually going to join NATO, but this is going to create more tensions. Okay, more escalation is continuing to happen. Although um, obviously the uh, the West NATO believes that Ukraine is very important; they're a vital country to protect right now to keep Russia, uh, you know, back away from their doorstep. Um, that you know Ukraine's right in the middle of all this, so uh, they don't want to lose Ukraine as an ally. And uh, they're going to be forking up a lot of support even over the next year. I know they're going to be supporting Ukraine with like 40 billion euros uh, to support this war at least for another year. So it could potentially drag on for maybe another year. Or we'll see because we know as well that Ukraine is running out of troops right now. So if they can't find a way to fill their ranks and get more troops, and I don't even know if they can last for another year, but we'll have to see how this goes. Um, and then we also know that Ukraine's getting lots of air defenses, things like that. So maybe that will change uh, the course of this war, potentially. We'll have to see. Um, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get right into this. I've got a report here for you on AP. It says Ukraine is on an irreversible path to NATO, but only after the war with Russia ends. It says here that 32 members of NATO on Wednesday formally declared Ukraine is on an irreversible path to membership in the Western Alliance, military alliance, offering a bare but more binding assurance of protection once its war with Russia ends. NATO member countries individually and in Wednesday's joint statement from their summit in Washington announced a series of steps aimed at bolstering Ukraine's defenses. That includes the U.S., the Netherlands, Denmark announcing that first NATO provided F-16s would be in the hands of Ukrainian military pilots by this summer. So we did a whole video on that yesterday. That Ukraine's going to be getting F-16s, uh, multiple air defense systems, I think something like four or five Patriot missile systems. So we did a whole video talking about that yesterday. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky tweeted his appreciation of the effort to strengthen his air force coming soon after Ukraine saw one of the deadliest strikes of the war. NATO on Wednesday also announced a long-term commitment of security assistance to Ukraine and confirmed establishment of a new NATO center aimed at ensuring that Ukraine gets more reliable flow of arms and training from members of the alliance. But the commitments are, still fall short of striking power Ukraine needs uh, it needs to defend to defeat uh, the invading Russian forces. Final statement called China, which the West says provides components for Russia's weapons, a decisive enabler of Russia's war against Ukraine. That's a big topic right now, too. Uh, we may do another video on this. Maybe not. We'll see. But right now, NATO was calling uh, China during this conference. They were calling them a decisive enabler, considering that they are sending uh, components to Russia to build weapons to strike Ukraine, that uh, some NATO members were also stating that uh, China needs to stop doing this or they're going to suffer some sort of consequences, okay? What would that be? Maybe sanctions, maybe something else. We'll have to see. Uh, but uh, yeah, they're calling they're calling China out and uh, saying they are a decisive enabler in this war against Ukraine. Ukraine's future is in NATO. Alliance members said in their statement, we will continue to support it on its irreversible path to full Euro-Atlantic integration, including NATO membership. The alliance welcomed Ukraine's democratic, economic, and security reforms needed to join and said it would get an invitation when allies agree and conditions are met. While the leaders stand ready to offer Ukraine the means to defend itself in a war now in its third year, 
Nowhere do they say that Ukraine should prevail over Russia. Indeed, their statement said that NATO does not seek confrontation and poses no threat to Russia. We remain willing to maintain channels of communication with Moscow to mitigate risk and prevent escalation. So if you notice here, it says... Uh, that it says uh, here, nowhere do they say that Ukraine should prevail over Russia. So let's say Ukraine loses in this battle against Russia. How is Ukraine going to join the NATO alliance? Um, I would think that they would have to come sort of to some sort of surrender or peace deal with Russia. Um, it, it obviously couldn't be surrender, right? Because if they did surrender, then wouldn't that mean uh, that Russia would take over Ukraine potentially? And if that were to happen, how would they join NATO? So. In a way, it seems like maybe NATO's stating that they don't have to prevail over Russia, but secretly they do want uh, Ukraine to prevail. Obviously, they want them to win this fight. They're giving them these weapons. They're selling them these tanks. They're giving them everything, uh, F-16s. So obviously, they want them to win this fight, um, but uh, and that's the only way they could obviously join NATO too, right? So it says here, NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg underlined that Ukraine will not join the alliance's ranks immediately. But he insisted that must happen after the war is over to ensure that Russia never attacks Ukraine again. Of the overall NATO assistance, he said, We are not doing this because we want to prolong the war. We are doing it because we want to end the war as soon as possible. Solenberg also delivered a passionate defense of the military alliance itself Wednesday when reporters asked about the possibility that Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump, a NATO critic, could pull U.S. support for the alliance if he wins in November that's a big topic right now, too, that if Donald Trump wins in uh, in November and wins the presidency, that's potentially next year uh, they could uh, eventually pull out of the alliance or at least pull support from it. Um, and then also we know that Donald Trump wants to end this war in Ukraine. So, uh, you know, a lot could be changing here in the next few months. And I think we're going to see a lot of big changes coming from NATO, a lot of big changes coming from uh, from Russia as well and, and inside of Ukraine. Um, there's just going to be a lot happening here and a lot of strategic maneuvers <clears throat> being made here, considering that uh, Donald Trump could, could potentially win. OK, this is obviously a big catalyst here. And if he does end up getting in the White House, we're going to have some uh, some major changes here. So um, I want to show you one last thing from Dmitry Medvedev on X. OK, let me go ahead and get this up here for you. And it says the Washington summit declaration of July 10th mentions the irre irreversible excuse me, path of Ukraine to NATO. For Russia, two possible ways of how this path ends are acceptable. Either Ukraine disappears or NATO does. Still better both. Okay, so he's saying that uh, basically Ukraine cannot join NATO. Okay, and, and Vladimir Putin has come out and said that many times too. He even said that in his uh, proposal to uh, call for a ceasefire inside of Ukraine. That Ukraine would have to pull away from the front line and allow and allow Russia to take over the annexed areas that they've already taken and stop attacking Russia. And then on top of that, they cannot join NATO. Okay, so we know that Russia's stance is Ukraine cannot join NATO. Now we've got this report coming from Dmitry Medvedev, where he's stating here that if basically if Ukraine end if Ukraine joins the alliance with NATO, that Ukraine will either disappear or NATO will. Okay, and what does that mean? Okay, that to me, that sounds like nuclear war or some sort of nuclear threat. And we've heard many times that, uh, that you know, from Dmitry Medvedev that he's willing to, you know, to launch nukes. Okay, he said this many different times. Even Vladimir Putin has. Uh, many, many top officials in the Kremlin have come out and talked like this. So, uh, you know, obviously another major threat here to NATO. And uh, we know clearly for sure that Russia does not want Ukraine to join. So this is going to get very, very interesting over time. Uh, these next three to four months will get very interesting. I think it will, it will, uh, this war will definitely ramp up like crazy. And we're probably going to have a lot more innocent people who are going to die in this conflict, especially in Ukraine. And uh, we'll have to see if the U.S. starts allowing Ukraine to start striking in Russian territory. That's going to create more escalation. Uh, Ukraine's getting F-16s very soon. So... Lots of big developments happening here in this war, and it's just going to get absolutely insane throughout the next maybe six months up to a year, assuming that Ukraine can continue fighting that long, and uh, a lot, lot's going to happen, okay? So I'm going to continue to cover this story. If anything comes out uh, regarding this with, with uh, Ukraine's joining NATO and all that, I will definitely update you guys, but I hope you got something out of this today. That's going to be it for this update. If you did, please smash that like button. Also, if you enjoy my content, 
please consider subscribing down below. Hit the notification bell. That way YouTube can notify you. And with that, hope you all have a great day. Everybody take care and God bless. And we'll see you in the next one.